Okay, something a little interesting. Um, these started off as two shaded pole motors, uh, the same, and I just cut through the centre of the rotor hole on each and joined them together. And um, the idea was to put a magnet in the middle and give it a spin and see what kind of power it can generate um, via the two coils. Uh, the setup so far, what we're looking at here. I simply have, um, we're using this one as our secondary and I have a 100 ohm resistor across that and the blue channel of the scope across that. Um, the other coil we're using is our primary at the moment and the yellow channel of the scope is across the primary showing us a voltage and the primary is being driven by our function generator up here at 100 hertz at the moment. Um, and that is what we have on our scope. So um, the voltage across the primary coil is 3.92 volts RMS and across our 100 ohm resistor on the secondary we have 56 millivolts RMS um, which is very poor. So uh, what I found was um, if I take this extremely strong neodymium magnet it is an N52, um, three quarter inch by one inch, and um, I place it inside in a hole there. Um, my initial thoughts would be that, um, being the strong magnet that it is, the core would become somewhat saturated, um, and or we would see a very large offset on the um, AC waveform on the secondary uh, whereas that magnet would bias the secondary coil however what happened was not that at all so, oh, that is extremely strong ok so our magnet sitting in there now so one, the bottom half of this core um, which of course is one full loop it's most like a toroid bottom half will be one field of that magnet and the top half is the other field of that magnet. What we see happen here now, of course our input, input voltage hasn't changed, but um, the output across our 100 ohm resistor has now gone up to 368 millivolts across that 100 ohm resistor. So, and you will see also um, if you look carefully at the waveform, um, the blue channel we're looking at, for some reason there is uh, no offset or no biasing of the um, core. So even though we have an alternating field here um, across our core from the primary because it's getting fed with an AC current um, and our magnetic field that is being supplied to the core by our permanent magnet is fixed, we do not get uh, the biasing effect you would expect to see and um, instead of actually killing the um, current being produced by the secondary across that 100 ohm resistor it has amplified it by, um, what was it, about six times. So, um, very interesting effect. So we have no bias by placing that uh, magnet in there, even though the field is not alternating. And it is an extremely strong magnet, like I said, an N52, 3 quarter inch by 1 inch. Um, yeah, so we get no biasing of the current output on our secondary that we would expect to see um, and rather than it killing the output it's actually amplified it by six times so um, that's quite interesting I thought I would just share that before I go ahead and uh, turn this thing into a generator but um, it has had the opposite effect to what I thought it would Anyway, 
thanks for watching um, that's about it for this video of course we haven't done any um, current measurements on the input or phase relationship anything like that um, maybe I could get some sort of uh, tank circuit going on the input or our primary coil and um, experiment with this a little further before we go turning it into a generator but um, extremely interesting that that magnet that I can't get out now it's even on the side like that it's killed it but um, for some reason this is very hard to get up one handed ok so our magnet's no longer there we have uh, 56 millivolts RMS across our 100 ohm resistor We'll put our magnet back in there, like so. And now we have 376 millivolts RMS across that 100 ohm resistor. Yeah, interesting. Okay, uh, I'll let you know where we end up with this one. And uh, let me know your thoughts, guys.